All right, guys, welcome to Bite Me. This is season one, episode 32, The Truth About Lady Nerd Fox. Even with the implementation of a female vice president, the struggle of simply existing as a female continues. Less pay, more judgment, unfair and unrealistic standards that set the bar so incredibly high you wonder why you get up in the morning. But one particularly insidious, insidious transgression against the woman is one you wouldn't necessarily expect. The judiciary maze that is family court and child custody. Today, a follower and a friend, Lady Nerd Fox, aka Jen, is here to commiserate with me over the battle that is corruption in the courthouse. Jen, would you please introduce yourself? My name's Jen, Lady Nerd Fox on uh, TikTok. Um, okay. Tell us yeah. a little about yourself. Um, I am elder millennial, live in okay. Louisville, Kentucky, which is not a secret at this point. Um, I have two kids, an older um, non-binary child and a younger daughter who will be 13 this year. Wow. Yeah. 13. We were just yeah. talking about a little bit before the show, Jen and I were commiserating over what it is to have prepubescent children, <laughs> the struggle that goes along with that. That struggle bus. <laughs> it, is, it truly is. So, okay, cool. So you're sitting there in Mitch McConnell's state today and, uh, you know, but it sounds like you had said, uh, we, we talked a little bit earlier that you are in a blue area. So that's been nice for you. Yes. And they have some BLM signs in the yard and you're able to find sanity that way. Yes. Well, and he lives in the same area. So he has all that stuff in his, his little area too. Mitch McConnell does? Yeah. He that lives a joke. He lives in the liberal part of the state. What the oddly hell? enough. Yeah, that is very odd. He's an odd little man. I've often wondered if dementia isn't setting in there. Some something sort of is thing. going on with him and I don't know what it is. Yeah, like childhood trauma or something. There's there's something and I don't know. I'm like, is your wife just taking over and pushing you over now? Because that's a yeah. situation too, because his, yeah. his wife is out of his league. I'll Way. say it. I'll Way. Say it. She, she did some horrible things, but still yeah way out of his league <laughs> so, so out of his league I don't know. well anyways enough about mitch uh mitch the bitch uh what yeah. did i just say that yeah i did so yeah. all right <laughs> no one's gonna disagree with me right jen yeah no not a one <laughs> nobody so um today what we thought we'd give you guys um jen has so graciously agreed to discuss um family courts um she's been a victim to it i've been a victim to it i've talked a little bit about it on my tiktok today we're going to talk about her experience uh, and mine more so hers um and she's going to give us her take on how things go down and i know that a lot of my followers struggle with that so hopefully for some of you at home we can provide some solace for what you're going through that you're not alone and that um there is light at the end of the tunnel you see me and jen here we're happy we're doing things so um so let's go ahead and talk about it so the first question that i have for you is what has your experience in family court been like and how did it make you feel and what impact did it have on your life? I have to say that um, uh, the courthouse is an actual trigger for my PTSD. Like Me that's how bad it was. Yeah. Um, how it started was, you know, I, I met my starter husband, got his representative. Who was starter wonderful. husband. I like that. <laughs> great he was perfect um yeah but then you know the mask starts to slip mm -hmm. and he would start being physical with me like as I had our infant daughter in our hands and stuff like that and I would you know go and have um or I put a restraining order against him because things are a little bit different here because it's a commonwealth so okay. can you explain I don't the, I, I'm not so familiar. I, would, I wouldn't necessarily have to press charges against him the state can press charges against him okay um it's a whole thing I wonder if we that have that in South mean, Dakota I don't know I don't know I'll have to check but okay so it's a commonwealth not, there's not many commonwealths I think there's only like four 
Okay. Because I know okay. Virginia is a Commonwealth, the Kentucky is a Commonwealth, and there's I think two other ones. Yeah, I feel like it might be a southern, southernish, more that it's area. Thing. Yeah. Well, I I think there's one in New England, and I I could be wrong, but I believe that's correct. Okay. Um, but I would go and get a restraining order because I'm like, okay, bud, you need you you need your time and I'm gonna you know I want to stay safe I want my daughter to be safe like whatever and so in turn he would turn around and put one out on me right okay so the game show up the court and it's like they would drop both of them and I'd have to deal, deal with, with him and he's like we can we can work it out it'll be fine we, let's keep our family together you know this that and the other um and I'm like oh okay you know I'd I'd never run into a narcissist before so I didn't know how they worked and I'm going in like you know thinking this person also has the best of intentions and is coming in with yeah why would anybody be that evil you don't want to think right no like you think someone is coming in with you know the same good intentions you have yeah and that is not what happened no um so, I mean, it was years of that, me, you know, putting in a, you know, my best friend taking me to the domestic violence window, getting a um, restraining order. And then he, the next day, like when he got served, he would go and get one against me. And it was just ongoing, ongoing for a couple of years. Keeping you trapped. Yeah. Yeah. And- like if you don't want me you are more than what like you can just let me go I'll be fine like it, it'll be okay but I think he inherently saw something in me that he just doesn't have right which is the confidence and you know pe- I'm friendly to people and you know He's and he's also not from here. He's from New York. Oh, so okay. It's a completely different um, culture, and I think that really, really, he didn't get that. Um, also, his mom is very much intertwined into the story because he oh what a coincidence an emotionally incestuous relationship the mar- the narcissist had with his mother never heard of I'm that telling you. i'm telling you i did not meet <laughs> this woman until my baby shower yeah. yeah i was like are you joking yeah so it was yeah it was a big cycle of let's go around and you know just put you know, meanwhile, you know, he's putting things out on me. I'm putting things out on him because I'm trying to keep myself safe. He's doing it as a tactic, you know, just to be like, oh, well, I'll show you. Yeah, like a big game. It's hard to say why any of the narcissists do the things they do. I mean, is it something they admire in us? Is it that they, I mean, I think it just comes down, they're just inherently evil due to something that happened in their own lives you know oh hurt absolutely people, hurt people 100%. hurt yeah I mean it's your story is like my story and probably every story of every woman listening to this um yeah. so we talk about how you know he was playing this little game and this is prior to even anything custodial was going on like yeah just him trying to keep you so then you know, you get into your, your kids getting a little older, you get into the family court system. Eventually some type of divorce takes place, which probably took years in retrospect. How would you say that in the courtroom, your experience went in comparison in comparison to your ex's experience? What was he allowed to do? What opportunities was he given that you weren't? Because I had been home with our daughter um he got to get a big fancy lawyer and I got someone from um oh I can't think of the the office that provides you lawyers yeah 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 like some some type of family advocacy yeah I'm sorry, I apologize the dogs are barking right now just ignore them yeah this is a typical day at my house but <laughs> yeah, but anyway right. so you but, got some type of um 
uh, defense, I, I don't want to say defense attorney because you're not a criminal, but like um, some sort of government funded agency lawyer. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Legal, legal aid. There it is. Legal aid. Legal yeah. Aid. Okay. Yeah. And you know, it, it was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and we got divorced and it really, it, it was quick. Yeah. It was quick. And we had our own, you know, our visitation, all this stuff. He wasn't adhering to it. I would have to go back into court. I mean, it was just like basically judicial abuse. Yeah, for sure. You know, and which I'm sure they didn't see on his end. No, they not at that point. They hadn't. Okay. So once again, he's like, you know, are you we, telling me at, at some point in time, there was a fuck you moment when the court realized he's the perpetrator? Yeah. Well, you got to tell us about that. We'll get there when we get there, I suppose. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, so he's all, let's get back together. You know, da, 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 da. and I'm like, okay, oh, let's do that. Because, you know, I don't learn a lesson like you would think. And he uh well that's he, just trauma bonding we it all is. It, I mean now that I know like the lingo and I've been through trauma therapy and all that stuff it's like the love bombing and all that yeah. stuff and you know that's how it went mm-hmm. and we were to even after we were, were divorced we stayed together for like another two wow. years but he would on we weren't um friends on social media so he would be out like trolling for checks and being like well I'm divorced which is which was true but he also had me there taking care of our child and so he's already looking for other victims oh yeah 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 yeah. and did oh my gosh and did because he can't have your narcissistic supply anymore he's got to look for his next supply so yeah 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 So we had gone, it was getting, it was a couple days before our daughter's birthday. The neighbors were having a party for their daughter's birthday and they had a big blow up, you know, thing like you do at kids parties. Sure. And yeah, I think, um, my daughter was about five at the time and, um, my starter husband was really making into making his own beer with a really high alcohol level. Sure. (laughs) So, <laughs> you go so, men what are you gonna do <laughs> i'm like this is what you're choosing to spend money on perfect, right. perfect. Right. <laughs> so he um got really super drunk and i was like look i have to go home and start dinner yeah so i'm gonna go home and start dinner we live six houses down and i'm there and i'm cooking dinner and he he's comes back and he's like you left me there I'm like no sir I told you I was going to make dinner um it's not like I I got in the car and left I literally walked down the block home yeah 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 so I'm he goes to bed and I'm making dinner and then he like passes out and I'm like okay cool you know I'll eat my dinner and I go I go on our back deck to smoke because we don't smoke in the house sure all of a sudden I hear the door open and I look back and it's him and I'm like okay I figure he's gonna you know come out and smoke a cigarette with me that is not what happened um I had hair like yours like my hair was up like yours he took me by my ponytail and drug me through the yard and I got loose of him and was running in between cars in our driveway and I got passed him and got in the house and almost got the door shut to the bedroom and meanwhile his, his father is sitting in the living room while this is going on watching watching this happen not stopping it not stopping it and so now I'm trapped in the bedroom with him and the next thing I know he throws me on the bed and chokes me until I'm unconscious and so, and when I start to come to him and his dad are at the end of the bed and I don't know what they're talking about because my hearing hasn't really come back yet. And so I just see them talking and I'm like kind of confused. I'm like, what happened? 
And then all of a sudden he grabs my ankles, pulls me off the bed and just sucker punched me. And I was like, I, I was shocked. I stood up and like our dresser, you know, you have a, a dresser in the mirror and I got, it, it, I mean, as soon as I stood up, you could see the bruising on my face. And so when I got up, I'm still kind of like, what? And like, I don't understand what's going on. And then he has me backed up against the wall and he's in my face and he's spitting and telling me I'm this and I'm that. And da, da, da. And his dad, I will say this, his dad threw me my car keys. Okay. And I got him and I got in my car and I went across the street and I called the cops and he got in trouble for it. And his mom, he got arrested. Yeah. And once his arraignment came up, his mom was like, well, you have to go to show support. I was like, have you seen my face? <laughs> oh my God. Have you seen my face? You have I mean, to go to your abuser's arraignment to show up, show support for the person who abused as, you? As if, I, as if I supported this. Wow. I mean, the inside of my mouth was bruised. Um, it knocked a couple of my teeth crooked. Um, I had a concussion. Like, it was bad. Really, Yeah, that's really other bad. level shit. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it was really traumatic to say so, that. So, at that point, the court started to see a shift, I bet. Yes. That's and so when they started to see a shift. When it started going to criminal court. Then they started to listen to you. Yeah, because I told her I don't want to go to this court date. And then I thought, no, no, I'm going to go because I want the judge to see my face. You knew that he would recognize you. Yeah. And it so must be I a did. smaller town. Um, it's a smaller circuit court. Put it okay, that. sure. So um, they roll him out in his shackles and all that stuff. And I'm there. Wow. My face is like that. And the judge looked at my face and was like, we are absolutely not lowering his bond. And, you know, sorry for you. And he went back to jail. Nice. And how so, long was he in there? He was probably in not too long. Two weeks. That's, that's all right. <laughs> but <laughs> you throw more- a Yankee in a Southern jail, they're going to know you're not from here. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so, you know, he got his shoes stolen and then he was like, you were sleeping with the cop that arrested me because, um, the place oh, I was okay. working, yeah. And the place I was working at at the time, you know, they had a, we made you know, sports merchandise. So they had a cop outside in case anybody tried to steal anything. And it just so happened to yeah. be that cop and that cop didn't know who I was, but he knew that I worked at that place. And that's sure. all I know. But he was like, you're sleeping with that cop. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, they always got to bring sex into it. Like, forget the fact that they're calling us slaps and whores, but like, it's like, what is this weird fantasy in your head of me just sleeping with these random people? Like, forget the fact that you're just a piece of shit and that's why you got in trouble, but you, then you right. just want to make it about me being a whore. They always want to do that. If there's a comment made and they don't like it, well, you're a whore. Well, you're a slut. What does that have to do with anything? Not a like, thing. <laughs> they're trying to hurt your feelings. And that's the thing. I'm like, you have to dig so deep to hurt my yeah. feelings. Oh yeah, it's dead inside. Yeah, you know, like, they're so I beat you to it. it. You can't <laughs> hurt me. Yeah, you yeah. can't hurt me. It's a blessing and a curse, you know. It is it's, a blessing and a curse. But, but um, I had been at work after all of this, and he got out of jail, and he had to go to his brother's house to stay, and they took all his guns away, and yeah. I stayed at the house. Is he a felon now? Um, no, he got it expunged. Like he pled guilty. Alfred and plea. He and, and he pled what? An Alfred plea. What's that? Um, that's like saying I'm guilty, but I'm not gonna admit I'm guilty, and you have enough evidence to see that I'm guilty, but um I'm going to say I'm not guilty. I wonder if they have that here. 
asking for a friend. No, I'm asking for myself because like, you know, my situation. Yeah. Like, son, and then now I'm a felon. So I'm wondering, like, I don't know. I, I'm told it would be easy for me to get an expungement. This is totally off topic, but <laughs> I'm told it would be easy for me to get an expungement. But the thing is, it's always on your record, even if you get it expunged. So well, I hope so, because yeah, if, if anybody F- deserves it, it is it's him. If the FBI ever looked into it, you know, I mean, he can hold up his little expungement paper or his Alfred plea or whatever all he wants to. At the end of the day, they're going to see what his charges were. Yeah. So he'll like, never be able to get like a government job or anything. I guess I don't know what he does now. He, um, he collects disability. Oh, yeah. And he lives with mom, probably. Uh, mom lives with him. As mom lives with him. Yes, would not be the same if mom wasn't in the equation. Oh my God, our lives mirror Girl, each other. that woman came into my house uh-huh. with, and did not tell me anything. I'd been gone, like I went to my friend's house to hang out because, you know, as we do, I come home, yeah. this woman has painted my the inside of my house like doo-doo what brown. What the fuck? Oh yeah. my God, she painted your house. The inside, the interior, all brown this is her I'm house not, or i mean your house that yes. she does not live in that, that, she, that, was, that she was staying and she okay. is the best as far as i'm concerned at this yeah point. like you know what i mean she's like not, she's not on the title she's not on no, the lease not on the lease not on anything the cops then told her you don't live here um that's crazy shit man i, I mean it's, i never walk into no one's house and paint their house and not only that, but brown of all colors. Yeah, you yeah, that's... Paint it like a nice beige, a gray, a blue, brown. She was trying to tell you something maybe, you know, covert. They're passive like that. They, they are. They do passive aggressive shit. But, See, but oh. that's where she messed up because I'm super direct. <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm like, <laughs> what is this shit, literally? <laughs> you like, have like... You literally have expression. I've witnessed since we've been talking expressions on your face that could kill a person. It, so. it is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah. Like, on that note, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Bite Me. Okay, guys, welcome back to Bite Me. <laughs> I'm here with Jen, Lady Nerd Fox. I've got my recording going a little, a little wiry on me. Um, we're going to ask our next question here. Um, and this one's kind of loaded because like, I already know the answers to this. Like we all do if we've been through the court system with a narcissist, but we're going to ask Jen what she thinks. Where do you think the key issues lie in the court system? And what do you believe the reason for the blatant sexism is? And would you say it's narcissist or patriarchy related? I think it's narcissist and patriarchy related. Okay. Um, which I find here's here's the thing he had a woman lawyer I had a male lawyer yeah um the women are worse oh my oh my god the the judges and the lawyers I feel women oh yeah I mean it went it, it went really crazy until um he messed up he messed up I was at yeah. work one night and it was on my birthday which I thought was just chef's kiss <laughs> he texted me and he wasn't supposed to be and he wrote like terrible vessel you're a bad mom um hashtag like a bunch of brando like he's probably drunk stuff. oh bet, bet yeah yeah for sure um, but the judge finally was like let me see that and she was like did you write this and he's like yeah but I don't really know what it means and he's and she was like but you wrote it yeah what does he mean he doesn't know what it means how are you gonna write something you didn't know what it meant well his lawyer didn't show up to that appearance oh so he got it out of he's getting the axe and she saw it and was like leave this woman alone yeah period yeah and so she started to see the dots and then she retired so i got a whole new lawyer like a whole new judge which was good or bad um 
I mean, it, okay. It sounds like the previous one was all right, and then you got a new one who maybe, yeah. you know, I mean, all the difference can be made in switching your judge, I have found, has been my experience, which is sometimes I, very difficult to do. It is difficult to switch judges because I'm like, this is someone, and our, you know, file is thick. Sure. So, yeah. but I really think because, you know, he gets help you know, from his flying monkey mom and yes, yes. he has, he hit at the time he had more money than I did. And then I met my now husband Yeah, and that set him off, yeah. set him off. We've been separated completely two years. And when I met my husband, my starter husband absolutely lost his mind. Two years is pretty fresh for separation and divorce. So I bet he's still reeling over that. Oh, oh, he's still, I mean, it's like I said, I've been remarried almost seven years later and he's still salty. Yeah. Yeah. Because my husband um, has is everything a, he could not be for you. That is exactly right. He's everything. very secure about it. He feels yeah. like, because for the narcissist, it's losing and winning, and he lost that battle. Right. And he you, thought, he's thinking, you know, well, the one thing I can take from you is your kid. Yeah. That's and his, he, that's his Hail Mary. That's what that was. Try. That was the Hail Mary. And I was like, that, if that's what you think, if that's what you think, you <laughs> There's go, that look I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Because if anything, like I said, my um when I was 19 I had a daughter and put her up for adoption and she and I are in contact they and I are in contact um and they are you know just as just as honorary as I am so I know that's running through her veins too and I wonder how it will turn out when she gets just a little bit older Oh, I think that that's going to be wonderful. I hope that our daughters are bitches. I hope oh, man, I can, I'm I like, hope. be the nasty one. Yeah. yeah. Don't be put up with that one shit. Don't ever put up with no Don't one's fucking anybody. Shit. Don't yeah. put up with any dumb men. Mm-hmm. Like live yeah. your life. Yeah. Live your life. And let, if you find someone, let them come to your level. Yeah don't see potential and think that it's going to be great because when me and the starter husband got together, I was in tech support and he was doing, you know, making, doing sales and hospital for the stuff they put in your back for surgery. Um, okay. And so I, I mean, I made just as much money as he did, but he then didn't and he got <laughs> and had a back surgery and now he gets disability and well, and I pay him child support every month you pay him I pay him I also pay money. child support yeah my god I know what is this life I know I'm like you know <laughs> like my friend Jesse I don't know if you follow her Sid Coda she's out here in South Dakota too Sorry, my dogs are breaking in. She was like, she told me, she's like, if I paid child support to my ex, I would be, she's like, I would every time I saw him in public be like, hey, honey, did you get your child support this month? I know you need it. I'll make sure you get your bills paid with that. You know, like belittling. Yeah. Oh, That's and what you should say, do. as I went through um, the first couple years of therapy, I was terrified to see him out. I was so afraid I was going to see him out somewhere. And I was like, wait, he would be far more scared of me. Yeah. If it was the other way around because he likes, he loves this area code. Like, is it his I, stomping grounds or what? It, he just likes the bougie part of, <laughs> of the town. And yeah. that's where I happen to live. My daughter's pediatrician is up the street. Her therapist is up the street. Like everything my daughter does is up the street. Yeah. And so well, I'm like, being in a more wealthy area like that, would you say that's that's probably why you pay him child support is because you with your new spouse make more money than him. Is that how the court saw it? He, no, because he can't take my husband's money. 
Okay. But they saw since he's on disability. Does that um, basically, as far as that was concerned, we were on an even level. Yeah. So I pay him what I would make if I made minimum wage. That's crazy. Yeah. But I ain't missed a payment. Yeah, same here. Same yeah. here. I'm like, I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. I would be given $2 handies at the truck stop if it had to come to that. Like, I, you will not get it. It's crazy to me because I'm sitting here, you know, I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. We're talking about our experiences in the court system. And it used to be very biased uh, towards the against the men and towards the women. And I guess I'm just wondering where the paradigm shift went, where it took a, just a complete 360 or 180 or whatever. And now the women are paying the men. Like, is this payback from the patriarchy? Like, oh, you wanted to be feminist. You want to be independent. Here you go. That's exactly what it is. I had the audacity to leave. Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. Pay back. Yeah. It's horseshit. It's just crazy to me. Like that it's just, it goes back to that insidious nature. Like, you know, like it's, you say, oh, well, you make more or child's here or whatever. And this is why you pay child support. But really and truly underlying what it comes down to is like the insecurity of the United States that women have the nerve to be independent. Yeah, I had I had the nerve to get the hell out of an abusive relationship. Yeah, How dare I? Yeah, it's like just like they try to knock us down with every other turn. You know, it's the fucking struggle being a woman. But. It is. It's like, and I would have to go in there, like not only that, but like with my face busted all up, I still went to work. I still did my job, and yeah. then I and. I worked a second shift job. So as soon as I got off my off work, I would have to go to the courthouse looking like that in my work clothes. So I know I'm looking, you know, musty, but it's like, I've been at work all night. Yeah. Plus you're raising the kid too. Yeah. So half the time or whatever your arrangements were. Yeah. So, but that's, yeah, that's, a, and, and, and you know, plus like there's no time for personal care either. Oh no. So, so like, yeah. where's the time to sleep? and go to court and have a cogent argument with any of the legal defense. It's just so frustrating. Yeah, that and the trauma, like they don't realize that like, you're not gonna remember everything linear. Right. Like it, it comes in kind of flashes. If you remember, you remember it at all. Something. Yeah, yeah, if you remember it at all. And there are things that I'll, you know, I'll talk to my therapist about and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't even remember that. Yeah. And, you know, we've done the EMDR and all that fun stuff. Cause that was really, it was bad. I was like, I mean, tell me at the end of the day when it, cause I have complex PTSD as well. It never goes away. You yeah. just deal with it. You manage you it. Learn, yeah. You just learn to manage it on that note though, for other women who are listening to this, who are going through the same thing. I mean, you and I have both been through the battle we've seen the dark places how are you doing now what advice would you have for other women going forward who are in the same boat what will help them get through it do you think i'm doing i'm doing great now but yeah, i think that's because like i have an excellent partner but i also have the best friends that i anyone could ever ask for like they they have been here for me through this whole thing and no no matter what had happened like and one of them I met through my ex-husband who is one of my like dearest friends I bet that chaps his ass it. oh I know but it does it. <laughs> I know. sorry I want her in you the kept, divorce you kept them in the divorce yeah 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 <laughs> Oops. that's funny all right but um there's like I said there's a lot of it that was just because of my up you know upbringing like my you know my parents are German and oh, wow. my dad was in the military and you know he's like take no shit take no shit take no shit and yeah I mean that that got worn down in that relationship but eventually it was like being around my people and being around like the people who are like no you're rad and don't ever forget that you defined like, yourself again 
yeah, to, to be able to find myself again and really be like, okay, no, I'm good. Like I'm good. Yeah. I'm still who I was. And you know, that guy's just a jerk and he had to try to pull somebody else down because he's miserable. Yeah. And that's it. But I mean, I would highly suggest seeking out a trauma therapist. Right. And they have places where they have sliding scales. I know because that's where I started and she was amazing. Um, and And probably like a little bit of online research too, just doing the work. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's really, you know, and, and document everything. If you are in a relationship like this, document everything. Yeah. That sucks. That's what it comes down to. That's what the court wants to see. Document, true. document, document. It's true. And you don't want to live your life like that because it's hard because it's like, are you serious? I got to get out a notebook for this. I got to take a picture of this. I got to record this. And that's exactly how it's like. And then half of it, they don't even take into evidence. So you got to take that into consideration too. But it does sound like um, at the forefront, um, even with therapy, even doing your own research, it sounds like your big key thing was a support system. Yeah. So that's... Yeah something that's important for people to get a hold of as well. There's so much that goes into rebuilding the foundation that the narcissist broke up. Yeah. Cause I mean, I was isolated, but I will say like my friends absolutely were like, as soon as like, it was kind of out of it, I, I ended up living with my other best friend because I lived with the other one before. So yeah. I stayed with her and um, then me and the current bow got together and it's been the rest is history the rest (laughs) is history like I couldn't be happier you guys seem like you have a relationship like me and my partner easy where um I have like he's always like what if I ever asked you to marry me I said you'll be fucking sad because I'm not gonna say yes because I like that we choose each other every day and that's not I mean if you guys are married that's whatever no no offense to anybody who is married but for me and my experiences with my partner now easy I just feel like you know you have your house I have my house you have your stuff I have my stuff and we just we have this union together and it's very equal and maybe that's a defense mechanism for me I think everybody has to find their own path yeah I mean there is no right way to do it you just do what makes you comfortable right I was definitely telling him I was like I'm not getting married again (laughs) like yeah don't don't ask me it's not gonna happen what changed and and then it was like eventually you just were why, like yeah. why are we like and we waited like we were gonna do it in December and did it we got it we got married on ten two so we could tell people to tend to their business. Okay, nice. <laughs> and so that was years after though. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it takes time. It takes time to trust again, and um and to trust yourself again. You know. Yeah. Because you don't, I think I because I had been in therapy like the whole time that like it didn't maybe take me as long, um, to be like, okay, I can trust again because I know like it would be one in a million for me to run into another one like that and not see it immediately. I mean, they're more often than you think, <laughs> but I, well, I don't know, I all of us. Healthy. Yeah, all of us, it, it's different for different people, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's once you do the hard work, once you really do the hard work and really figure out why you were in that situation, and I don't mean victim blaming why, I mean, like, what led to this, then it's right. pretty hard to not, like, af- you can't unsee the red flags after that. No. No, you know, and, I see, and the thing is, I'm such an observational person that I can see it in other people and know who to stay away from. And yeah. that's why, like, when we were talking before, it's like, no, I keep my cards close to my chest because, yeah. like, other yeah. people, you know, genuinely want to know, and some yeah. people just want to be nosy. Yeah, and some of them are pretty good at fox in the hen house, you know? Yeah, and but, even yeah. women. Yeah. Oh, especially women, especially women you have to watch out for. And I'm like, I'm just like, no, 
So yeah. speaking of other women, you know, and men and trolls in general, lately on your TikTok, you've been, <laughs> you've been, you've been coming at some of them because we, we don't put up with no shit on me and Jen's TikToks. We don't put up with anyone's shit. Lay down. Um, <laughs> so unrelated to the whole narcissism patriarchy court thing um and to conclude our podcast lately you've been talking about body shaming what and and we did talk a little bit about i think self-love is what you can take from our experiences post-narcissism so what led you down the path of self-love and acceptance and can you take us through that journey and tell us how we can do the same um honestly it's something that um i was brought up with like okay. my, my parents were always like, no, you're, you're the greatest and you're this. And, you know, you are I, gorgeous. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. although my hair. No, is, you're gorgeous. My you're hair, a lady who I'd be like, Hey, <laughs> hey, Brooke, what you doing? <laughs> can I be gay for a minute? <laughs> hey, like, let's take a date. Um, <laughs> let's just take a minute. Right. No, but I mean, it was always, you know, I, and I was talking to my mom about this yesterday. I was like, it always made me so uncomfortable when I was little because people would come up to me and be like, oh my God, you're so beautiful because like, you know, I've got really long, I, I had really long, still do have long eyelashes, big blue eyes. I had long, like red hair and they're just like, you're so gorgeous. And this, that, and yeah. the other, and you know, you have your family even my extended family, like pumping you up. So it was never a matter of like, my self-esteem comes from within. Right. Like, I, and, and trust me, like, I don't normally wear makeup. I don't normally fix my hair. I kind of look like a hobo most of the time. Who has time for that shit? I don't. You know? I, don't. Like <laughs> I don't. I don't either. Sometimes I, I do, you know, but. I put on um, some lipstick and. Yeah. Um, mascara for you yeah but I was like I'm not I don't have to do this my husband doesn't care if I do this my you know so it's right. it's me doing me and like really that's all I'm concerned about is like my happiness yeah because that's, that's all amazing. you can do like you die alone yeah so, like make yourself happy you Do have it. to live with yourself your whole life you're the only exactly. person to live with you your whole life exactly and you have to be you know in with your decisions and come to terms with that and you know it it happens like you it's like yeah I messed up here but that's okay like I learned from it and you grow from it and you keep it moving forgiveness self-forgiveness self-love oh, comes from yeah forgiveness. Yeah. You, you can't give yourself grace in these sort of situations. You got to be your own friend too, you know? Yeah. Which is hard. Like, it's so easy for like, I'll preach about it. But like, then I find myself even looking in the mirror and thinking, Ugh, and then it's like a whole, again, I think it's kind of like the PTSD thing. Like you learn how to manage, it's thought work. You learn how to yeah, manage your thoughts. It is. So well, that's you, you amazing, Jen. And I really appreciate We're you amazing. coming. <laughs> We're amazing. People who are listening to this are amazing. I Women know are. they're amazing too. I appreciate <laughs> it. But that's our show guys. Um, if you want uh, any more um, information on the idea that family courts are biased against men and, uh, and how that's a dangerous fallacy and that they're actually biased against women, you can check out um, theguardian.com. Sonia Sadha wrote a really decent article about that. You can also check out Dispelling the Myth of Gender Bias in the Family Court System by Kathy Meyer on uh, HuffPost.com. As always, check me out on thetruthfulgroomer.com. That's where this podcast will be as well, as well as all forums, uh, link tree in my bio on TikTok and in YouTube. And always check me out on Twitter and Insta. Jen, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Brooke, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Do you have anything you want to say to your viewers before we go? Do you have anything you want us to plug? Uh, no, just look me up, Lady Nerd Fox on, on the TikToks. <laughs> Very That's cool. It. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.